what are the Illinois Republicans doing uh, about the situation? Well, that's a that's a great question, Roger, and and I've been uh, working pretty hard on that along with uh, my uh, co-owner of Illinois Review, Illinois' largest conservative uh, news and opinion publication, Scott Casper. The two of us have been working hard because we've been trying to figure out, Roger, why Illinois Republicans continue to lose election after election, and our political leaders, our Republican political leaders, keep saying we're, we're we'll be positioned to win next time. We heard that in 2018 and 2020 and 2022. And in this past election, Roger, it was unbelievable. We lost every, Republicans lost every statewide race in Illinois. We lost uh, massive seats in the Illinois House and the Illinois Senate, giving the Democrats once again super majority control and, on local and state matters in our state capital. Democrats now can have committee meetings, they can have votes without. Republican input without a single Republican. Uh, they, they are completely irrelevant. We lost winnable U.S. or state Supreme Court races. We lost winnable congressional races. And so what we've been doing with Inter Illinois Review is trying to figure out why is this happening? And Roger, what we've discovered is that the uh, the rhinos, uh, the Republican in name only, only, the rhinos have found their way into the top leadership positions, not just in the Republican Party as legislators, but in the Republican Party itself and its infrastructure. And so what we're doing is we're working really hard uh, to expose this and get like our Illinois GOP chairman, Don Tracy, who Roger, just months before he was elected chairman of the Illinois Republican Party, he he in, uh, supported and made a personal donation to a Democratic judge who had just been endorsed by Democratic Senator Dick Durbin and a close ally of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Sherry Bustos, who at that time was chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. In 2002, this same man, Don Tracy, voted or ran as a uh, Illinois state representative as a Democrat. And fast forward, now he's chairman of the Re Illinois Republican Party. That's example one. Example two, Roger, is that during the pandemic, it was discovered that several Illinois Republican legislators in Springfield, our state capital, had accepted nearly $1.5 million in campaign contributions from where? One of the largest teacher unions in the country. And our new uh, House Republican minority leader is at the top of that list. Tony McCombie had accepted $119,000 uh, in campaign contributions from the most liberal teachers union. This same teachers union has been advocating for masks on kids in schools. The same teachers union has been advocating for this national sexual education standards curriculum, which is absolutely disgusting. I can't even talk about what's in that curriculum on my radio show because we'd get uh, vi we'd be fined. Uh, for federal communications, FCC violations, but yet they can teach it to kindergartners. They can teach it to first graders. We have Republican legislators that are accepting money from these very liberal teachers unions. Uh, and, and lastly, in Chicago, Roger, the Republican Party led by Steve Bolton, uh, they couldn't even identify or fund a Republican candidate for mayor. So what do they do? They decide, let's, let's figure out how to endorse a Democrat. So you have a Chicago Republican Party putting together an endorsement meeting to figure out which Democrats they can endorse in the mayor's race and which which Democrats they can endorse in local aldermen races. And so the idea of if you can't beat them, let's join them. Uh, Illinois Review, we're exposing that. And I think, Roger, that once we expose it and, and get these rhinos, get these fake Republicans out of their leadership positions, we're going to start winning again. And and what's interesting is that our Republican leaders here in Illinois are more concerned about keeping their titles than they are actually winning elections. So uh, Mark uh, Vargas is more than just a uh, local Illinois uh, talk show host, more than just a local activist. Um, he's actually worked uh, in the national security apparatus. Mark, tell us your background uh, working for the U.S. government. Yeah, it was great. During From 2007 to 2010, I worked in the office of Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, and I was on a special task force uh, in Iraq. It was called the Iraq Task Force for Business and Stability Operations in Iraq. It was part of General Petraeus' counterinsurgency strategy where uh, you don't win wars uh, with guns and bullets. You win wars by winning the hearts and minds of the people and putting them back to work. So I was part of a small 
uh, agile task force that reported directly to the Secretary of Defense. I was in Baghdad 14 times as a civilian. Uh, and, and our goal was the faster we could put local Iraqis back to work, the, fast, uh, the faster they would stop shooting our <coughs> U.S. service members. And so uh, I had security clearance. Uh, I would get uh, classified briefings. And so to think that Joe Biden could take these classified documents, bring them to his think tank on K Street down the street from the White House, to think that he could put them in his garage uh, in a pile of boxes next to his Corvette, uh, probably sitting next to a, a case of Ensure new Nutrition shakes, to think that they're in his home where Hunter Biden is considering, uh, where Hunter Biden lives is just outrageous. If you or I did that, Roger, we, we'd be in prison. 